In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure profiles in Azure Windows Virtual Desktop. Hello everyone, this is Seraltos, I'm Travis, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up FS Logics profile service with Azure Windows Virtual Desktop. Before that, please subscribe and hit that bell icon if you want to get notifications when new videos come out. Go ahead, because just for you, subscribing is free this week. Okay, first a little bit about FS Logic. FS Logic is now part of Microsoft, and Microsoft is making the product available for profile management in Windows Virtual Desktops. This is a good thing. Per Microsoft documentation, user profile disks are being depreciated, and does anyone use roaming profiles anymore? I hope not. I'm going to go over the basics of FS Logic installation using file shares to hold profile containers. This is the process outlined in Microsoft documentations, and I have to admit when I read it, I was a little disappointed. Here's why. There's a stated requirement for file shares with read-write access for a group of Windows Virtual Desktop users. This means there's a requirement for domain join file servers. Azure File Services is not an option because that does not support access based on AD group membership. I'm using a small server in my Azure subnet for the test. But in production, this would require HA file cluster with a minimum of two additional IaaS servers to support the environment. That doesn't even take into account sizing and IOPS requirements for larger environments. But don't worry, Microsoft has seemed to recognize this issue and is working on support for page blob storage with FS Logic's cloud cache option. I suspect Microsoft will have documented support for Azure Storage when this goes GA so there's no dependency on file services. So this is the plan. I have a managed image with all my software and start menu customizations just like we did on the last video. I'm going to deploy that to a new VM and configure FS Logic. That will then be turned into a managed image for use in this deployment. I feel compelled to come clean. I had a pretty elaborate plan in my last video of how I was going to manage images with unmanaged disks. That didn't work and I ended up redoing the environment with managed disks and managed images using the capture option in the Azure portal. Lesson learned. So with that, here's what I'm going to cover in the demo. Deploy a new VM from the template, then I'm going to add and configure FS Logic. I'm going to convert that VM to a new template, use that template to deploy the uh, Windows Virtual Desktop pool and test the profiles. So with that, let's jump into demos. Okay, buckle up everyone, it's time for demos. In this demo, I'm going to first uh, create a new virtual machine based on the template that I already created, similar to the one in the last video, only using managed images in this case. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go to the machine that I created. I have the documentation here from Microsoft on how to set up profiles. And the first thing you can see, it's asking you to deploy a virtual machine that will act as a file share and also prepare the virtual machine. If we go over to another computer I have in Azure, you can see I have a virtual machine. I've shared out profile, so that's all taken care of. I also have a group here called WVD Profile. That's just all the users who are going to be logging in and we want to have access to this profile share. Uh, so pretty simple there. So that group has access to this profile share and they're going to use that to write the containers of their profile. So if we go back to my server here, we're going to prep. Let's see, I deployed the server based on our image that I already created with all of the software customizations. And you can see, if you watch my last video, you can see this all looks pretty familiar. So the next thing we're going to do is actually install the FS Logic profile software. First thing we do is it tells you to uh, first connect to the virtual machine you're going to be using, which we did. And then it's got a link. I've got this over here where we can download the application. So I'll download this file. And then once that's downloaded and confirmed, I'm going to extract it. All right, now it's ready. So once it's extracted, the first thing I'm going to do is go into this license key file. And I'm going to need this for the actual setup. And honestly, I think it's the same key no matter what. So I'm not even going to hide that because you'll probably have the same one. I'm going to go into the 64-bit release. And here you can see there's a couple applications. But what I'm looking for is FS Logics app setup. So I'm going to run that. 
and I'll put the key in, get rid of the trial key, agree, and install. And I'll close that once it's finished. Now if I go into this computer, see program files, we can see FSLogic is there, so it's been installed. And we'll come back here. Now it's going to ask us to set up some uh, registry components. So I'm just going to go into regedit. And go to HK local machine, software, FS logics. And it's going to ask me to create a key called profiles. I like to copy and paste to make sure I don't fat finger something. And then within that key, I'm going to create two entries. The first is going to be a D word with the name enabled. And that value is going to be one. The next thing we're going to do is hop over and there's an option for VHD locations. And that's a multi-string value. Then I'm going to go into it. And here I'm going to just enter in the path to that share. I'm just going to check one thing because that's profile and I want to make sure that that's correct. So we go here, yep, it's profile. I want to, we've got profile and profiles. So it's, uh, you have to redo the whole thing if you enter something wrong. Speaking of that, uh, one thing that I did do is I missed the step of adding this profiles. I just put these two keys in FS logics. That cost me well, about three hours of troubleshooting time. And then another time I did this, I put quotes around this string. Uh, which that caused about two hours of troubleshooting time. So I do run into errors on these on occasion. Here's another one that came up, but this is pretty benign. It's just telling me that uh, it contained an empty string. So I click OK, and you'll notice it drops the cursor down here. So I can click OK. Now if I go back, backspace out, it'll give me the error again. So that's fine. It just cracks it. This will work no problem. Okay, so now I have the um, registry keys added. The next step is to run sysprep to get this ready for converting it to a manage image. I'll just go to the sysprep directory and I'm going to run sysprep. So what this is going to do, it's going to strip out all of the unique SIDs, all the unique values, and get it ready to become an image to deploy later on. So we do want out-of-box experience, we want generalized, and when it's done we want to shut down. So I click OK, and this will just take a couple minutes to complete. Once it's done, we'll get back to the demo. OK, put a fork in it. It is done. The remote desktop session ended, so that must mean we're done here. Let's just take a look. We'll give it a second to switch to shut down. OK, now it's showing stopped. So let's uh, create a managed image. We do that by going to Capture, and just a couple pieces of information that it needs. First is going to be the template name, and I've got this. I'm just going to use version 5 of the FSL temp test, and then resource group. I don't have the best naming convention here for my resource group. It just kind of grew organically. Bad planning on my part, but that's where I'm at. So I'm also going to automatically delete the virtual machine because, as it says up here, it's going to destroy it. So it's not going to be any use to me afterwards. So once that's done, I will hit Create. Now it's going to go through a process of stopping and converting this virtual machine into a template. Once that's done, then we can go and deploy it to a, a new host pool. Okay, so that finished. Let's go take a look at what we have here. We've got a whole bunch of templates that I'm holding on to. Uh, but this is the last one I'm going to use, uh, the V5. So let's go ahead and create a host pool. So we're going to do provision a host pool. We'll do create. 
And this is just like I've done before. So FSX. We'll give it a name. And I've got a list of default users I'm going to pull up here. And I'm going to create a new resource group. There we go. We're going to keep it in central US. And I'm going to pick light duty. We'll do 15. And we'll change the side to something a little bit cheaper. Although it is interesting they don't show the prices here. So we'll select that. So if I get if I have 15 users, it's going to give me two of these standard B2 MS VMs. And I do need two. Uh, with two, what I'm going to do is, is check that if I make a change on one, that the profile is going to reflect that when I log into the other. Okay, so I'll click OK here. I've got the prefix in. I've got my VMs all set up. Now here's where the magic happens, I guess. Uh, I need to get the image name and the image resource group. So I'll copy and paste the image name. And I've also got the resource group. Another window here. So I can simply paste that in. So that gives me the image name and the image resource group. I'm going to switch this to standard disks. I've got the domain join UPN, domain join password. I am going to specify a domain and an OU. And here I'll pick an existing network that has connectivity to the domain controller. That is important. You don't want to deploy a new uh, VNet because that will not, by default, have access to your domain controller and this will fail. And if you don't believe me, it says so right there. Okay, now I'm going to do the tenant group, tenant name, the UPN, and the password. And that all looks good to me. Let's let it finish running validation. Okay. And at this point, we're going to create. All right, so I'm going to edit this so you won't see all the waiting times, but that whole process took about 25 minutes. So I'm going to stop here and come back once it's done. Here we are, the deployment's finished. Let's take a look and build some profiles. So the first thing I'm going to do is come over to the domain controller that has a file share. You can see that's still empty because nobody's logged in. The next thing I'm going to do is go into code and we're going to get the host pool name. So I'll use the get RDS host pool command. And I have the tenant information already saved as a variable. So there we have it. That's exactly what we set up, FSX test. So I'm going to assign that to a host pool variable. Now I can start running some of these commands. This is the get RDS session host, and I just have it formatted in a way that I like to read it. So there they are. We have both of them. If I get the get rd user sessions, we'll see nothing's returned because there are no sessions. So the first thing I'm going to do is come down to this command. This is the set rds session host for virtual machine uh, test uh, fsx test dash one. I'll just call it dash one. I'm going to set this to false. So what that's going to do is tell it not to allow any new connections. And now if we look at this again, you can see allow new sessions is set to false for o or dash one. And I'm doing that so I can get all three users to log into this. And then I'm going to have them log in again to, to uh, the O1. And I'll switch this up. Once they do that, we should see those profiles hold between the two. So with that, let's sign in. I've got three different browsers here with three different users for each. So this is user one.
And while that's loading its profile, I'm going to log into the other two. Okay, so here I've logged into three different sessions with three different web browsers. I guess this is a good way to test the functionality of different web browsers. So I'm going to go back into my domain uh, controller here with that file share. And here you can see the three profiles have been created or containers, I guess. So it is storing the profiles on that domain controller. Now what I'm going to do is come over to each one. So I'll start with one and I'm going to change the desktop. I'm just going to make a couple random changes to make sure that they hold between login and log offs from different virtual machines. So we'll do that and I'll put a, and I'll put a new file on the desktop. Just a text document. Call this user one. I'm going to go over to the other one and we're going to change that. And now we'll go over to three. And I'll add another file on the desktop. Just indicating this is user three. I don't know that I need to get any more detailed than that. I think this should show pretty convincingly that the profiles are holding between logins and different servers. So now what I'm going to do is go over to one and I'm going to log off. There we go. Then I'll log off from two and three. I'm not going to log off. So I want to try to crash that server or take it unexpectedly offline. And I want to see if that profile holds because with roaming profiles, if the computer crashed that a user was logged into, it would never have a chance to update that profile. So let's see what happens. So the first thing I'm going to do is come back over here and I'm going to set this sessions to true. I'll run this command again to look at both of them and just see that sessions are allowed. Then if we look at user sessions, we can see we have one user on zero. So I'm going to come back here to the portal and I'm going to go into zero and I'm just going to stop it. So let's see what happens when that is no longer available. Okay, that's shut down. Now we can log into each one again. All right, so we're all logged in. You can see that the desktop held. So let's take a look at our session information. So we look at sessions. They're all on FSX test one. So they did all log into the second server, whereas we made the changes to the profile on the first. And if we come in here, we can see we have all those settings held. There we go. So I think that does it. That shows that the profiles are getting written to the network share and they're persisting between logins and log offs. That's it for the demo. Neat. I hope you found this helpful or at least interesting. Please subscribe and like if you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.